I want to share a few thoughts. I'm going to go really quick today. A few thoughts from God's Word um, from 1 Chronicles chapter 28 and 29. This is a passage of Scripture. It's the end of King David's life. King David is ruling over Israel, and he is uh, ruling and reigning, and his season of king and his life is getting ready to end. And the last thing he does as a king is give an offering. The last thing he does as a king is give an offering. And chapters 28 and 29 of 1 Chronicles give that, and we don't have time to read through it all today. But it's an incredible story and example of what it means to bring God an offering of worship. And he's doing it really to set up his son Solomon to build the temple. King David had it in his heart to build the temple, uh, yet it was not in God's plan for him to do it. And so in these chapters, the scripture explains he has it in his heart to do it, but it won't be his to do. It will be his son, Solomon, to build the temple. And so what David does is he tries to set up his son, Solomon, to build the temple. He's trying to pass the baton to the next generation to fulfill the heart of God, to build God a house, to build the temple. And so there's four things that David does to set up Solomon that I think are really similar to things that God does for us. So let's look at these really quickly. The first thing that David does is David gives Solomon a plan. David gives Solomon a plan. In 1 Chronicles 28, verses 11 through 19, for the sake of time, I'm not going to read all the way through it, but you can see on the screen behind me, uh, he gives his son Solomon plans for the temple, for the storerooms, for the upper parts, for the inner rooms. Um, the Spirit of God gives him the plans and for the treasuries, and he gives all the instructions about uh, the gold and the kinds of service and the details of the temple. This was not, hey, just go build a temple for the Lord. David had from the Spirit of God a detailed plan, and he gives Solomon the plan, here's how it's to be done, here's the the rooms here's the materials here's how you were to build the temple of the Lord David gives Solomon a plan the second thing he gives Solomon is David gives Solomon a promise he gives him a promise in verse number 20 after he gives them the whole plan he says to his son look at this be strong and courageous and do the work do the work do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord God my God is with you he will not fail you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. He gives his son, Solomon, a promise. The Lord is with you. He will not forsake you. Do the work. Be confident. Move forward because he will not fail you. He is faithful. He doesn't just give him a plan, but he gives him a promise of the provision, protection, and presence of the Lord to be with him as he fulfills the plan. How awesome is that? A promise from the Lord. The third thing he gives his son is David gives Solomon a people. He gives him a people. Look in verse number 21. He says, I've got the divisions of the priest and the Levites ready for all the work on the temple of God. And every willing person skilled in any craft will help you in all of the work. How encouraging is this? He doesn't just give him a plan. He doesn't just give him a promise, but he says there's people ready to come around you and alongside of you to build the temple. He's not going to have you do it alone. Isn't that the worst when someone gives you a task and they give it to you alone? But he says, hey, God is with you and people. I've assembled the teams and the craftsmen. The people are going to help you do it. And the final thing David does, he gives them a plan, a promise, and a people. And then David gives the Lord an offering. David gives an offering. So look in, verse, in chapter 29. He's given them all this instruction, all the promise, all the people. And then here's the last thing David does as king. Chapter 29. He gathers the whole assembly and here's what David says. My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The task is great because the structure is not for man, but it's for the Lord. I've given my resources that I've provided for the temple of God. Gold for the gold work, silver for silver, bronze for bronze, iron for iron, wood 
for wood, as well as onyx for the settings, turquoise stones, various colors, all kinds of fine stone and marble, all of these in large quantities. David is bringing and offering all kinds of material to build the temple. Verse number three, besides, in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures. So he gave the treasures offering from the land, but now he's saying, I'm bringing my personal treasures to this, gold and silver for the temple of God, over and above everything I have provided for the holy temple. 3,000 talents of gold, 7,000 talents of refined silver for the overlaying of walls and buildings, for the gold work and the silver work, and for all the work to be done by the craftsmen. So David brings a massive offering to the Lord. And then look what he asked the people. Who is willing to consecrate themselves to the Lord today? So he, he, he sacrifices radically as his last act of the king, and he calls to the assembly before, and he said, who else is going to consecrate themselves to the Lord? Who, who else is going to give in such a way to build God a house? And the verses that follow explain how the people of God come around, and they give so lavishly and so sacrificially that they have everything they need to build the house. And it reminds me of what God has done for us. It's very different times and very different settings, but the principles are the same. Just like David gave Solomon a plan, God gives us a plan. God has given us a plan. Did you know that? It's his word. It is the great commission. Jesus gave us a plan in Matthew 28. He said, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey the commands I've given you. Jesus gave us a plan. God gave us a roadmap. He gave us a task to fulfill and duties to do. Anybody know God has given us a plan. He's given us a charge. God didn't just give us a plan. God gave us a promise. He gave us a promise just like David gave Solomon in the Great Commission. It ends in verse number 20 by Jesus saying, Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So here's the plan, go and make disciples, but no, I'm with you. I'm going to be with you. We see in Acts chapter 1 as well, after he's commissioning the disciples, Jesus says, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. How many know we don't just have a plan from the Lord, but we have a promise from God that he's with us, his spirit will empower us. We've got the promise of the presence of God as we fulfill his plan. Anybody grateful for the promises of God today? Just like David gave Solomon a people, God gave us a people. God gave us a people. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 and 5 says, As you come to him, he's the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. He's saying, hey, if you are in Christ, you're a royal priesthood. You are living stones being built together to be able to offer spiritual sacrifices to God. He says, if you're a believer, you are a stone in the big house of God built together with other believers to build God a house, to build him a dwelling place. He says in verse number nine, of First Peter 2, you're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but, but you have now received mercy. He's saying, hey, if you're in Christ, you've got a plan from the Lord, you've got a promise from the Lord, and you've got people from the Lord to fulfill the plan with. Isn't the body of Christ beautiful that there's brothers and sisters in Christ that we get to serve the Lord alongside? We have brothers and sisters halfway across the world with us today serving the same God, the same mission, because God gives us a people to serve him alongside. He gives us a people. God gives us a plan, a promise, a people, and just like David, God gave us an offering. God didn't give us a financial offering. He gave us an offering worth far more than silver and gold. God gave us an offering of his very own son. John's gospel, chapter number three, verse 16 says, he loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son. The offering from heaven was the son of God. So that whoever believes in him should not perish, but should have 
eternal life. God, God gave us an offering. In Romans chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, it says, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but, but he gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things. Anybody grateful today God gave us an offering of his son in generosity so that we might know him, so that we might be called children of God. And so King David radically modeled this in his life. There's one example. God radically offered giving offerings. And so today we get to participate in what people that have been a part of the kingdom of God for thousands of years have done, and that's brought offerings to the Lord and sacrifice to him. And to finish today, we're going to read, I'm not going to do it yet, but the, the promise and prayer that David read in 1 Chronicles 29 over the people who just gave an offering. So when we give, I'm going to come back after that, and I'm going to read the same thing David did after they gave. And you will see and feel that the people that gave really, really felt what they were giving. This was, this was not a financial transaction. This was a spiritual, emotional transaction. And, and so today what we're doing is so, is so spiritual, and I, I want you to feel this in your heart today, okay? I heard a story that I think articulates it really well. The story goes like this. This man says that a father wanted to teach his son ownership, responsibility, so he tells his son, his son is 10 years old, he says, my son, you will earn $5 today. Today you will earn $5. When I come home from work, I'm going to check and you need to have earned $5 today. And the son's like, what do you mean I'm 10 years old? How am I supposed to go working in the streets? Where am I supposed to get $5? And the, and the dad says, you will earn $5 today. When I come home, I'm gonna check if you've earned $5. Dad goes off to work. The son has no idea what to do. The 10-year-old son goes to the mom and says, Mom, uh, I'm supposed to earn $10 today. I don't know what to do. Can I, uh, I'm supposed to earn $5 today. Can I have $5? And the mom gives the son $5. Dad comes home, knocks on the boy's door. Son, do you have $5? Did you earn $5 today? The son says, yep, I earned $5. And he takes the $5 out and hands it to the dad. The dad takes the $5, balls it up, and he throws it in the fireplace. And, and the, son, the son panics, and he goes and tells the mom, and the mom comes in, and the mom is freaking out. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? And the father says, I know that you gave it to him because when I burned it, you cared more than he did. So my son, tomorrow, you will go earn $5. Next day comes, he reminds him, hey, I'm going to work. When I get back, you need to have earned $5 today. And so the dad goes off to work. Now the son, he becomes a beggar. This is phase two, you become a beggar. He goes to the aunts, the uncles, the cousins, the neighbors. Hey, please, can I have a dollar? Can I have a dollar? Can I have 50 cents? I need $5 today. And, and he assembles $5. He gets one, two, three, four, five. From all the neighbors, all the aunties, all the uncles, all the cousins, he gets his $5 from everyone. And dad comes home. Son, do you have $5? Yes, here it is, dad. One, two, three, four, five. Father takes the $5, balls it up, throws it in the fireplace. And the son begins to cry. The mom doesn't respond at all. And so the dad says, I know you didn't get it from mom today, but I also know you didn't earn this $5. So tomorrow, my son, you will earn $5. Next day, dad goes to work, and the son now is in panic mode. I have to earn $5 today. And so this 10-year-old goes door to door. He's asking everyone, please hire me. Please hire me. I will do any job. I need to earn $5 today. I need to earn $5 today. And there's one man that says, I have sandbags I need to move across my property. So many sandbags. I need them to be hauled from point A to point B. For every sandbag you move, I will pay you a penny. So the boy says, let's go. The boy works all day. He is exhausted. He is giving everything he has, moving sandbags from point A to point B. 10 p.m., the boy calls it quits. I'm going home. I'm getting paid and going home. He goes home. 
The dad's there. My son, do you have five dollars? The boy says, no, I do not. But I have a dollar and 80 cents because he moved 180 sandbags. So he gives the dollar and 80 cents to dad. Dad balls it up, tosses it in the fire. As he's getting ready to toss it, the 10-year-old boy lunges towards the fire. And even as they're in there, begins to try to scrape out and get out every penny that was in there. And the father told him this. He said, my son, today you learned the cost of ownership and sacrifice. Why did the third day that boy feel it when the dollar eighty went in the fire? He felt it because it came with sacrifice. For some of you, you have yet to feel deeply for the kingdom of God because you're borrowing other people's sacrifice. And, and you cannot borrow their sacrifice and feel for kingdom things. There's no shortcut to this. It comes with sacrifice. Show me someone that feels deeply for the kingdom, and I guarantee you I'll show somebody who has paid great sacrifice for the Lord. And so today, what we have is an opportunity to say, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sacrifice. Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give an offering to you because you're so great and you're so worthy and you're so awesome. And I'm going to do it out of love for you, but I'm going to feel it. And Lord, as I feel it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to dig deep the well of my worship and devotion to you. And so today we have a chance to do that together to worship the Lord and to honor him with what he's given us. Amen. Do you stand up all over the room with me today? I'm going to turn it back over to Joseph here for a moment. We're going to sing worship for a few moments. And during worship, we're going to have our chance to give. And so the team is going to bring, the buckets are going to be up here this morning. And you should have got a Kingdom Builders envelope when you came in today. For the next few moments as we sing, I'm, I'm going to ask you to just take whatever God has given you. If you came prepared to give today, again, if you're, if you're new, we don't, we're not asking that you participate in this or feel any pressure to do that. But for those that call this home, if you came today prepared to bring your kingdom builders, I'm asking you as we worship to just hold it in your hand and take a few moments and just give it to the Lord. And then... For the next few moments as we sing, if you'd bring it up and put it in there. Me, me and my wife, we gave online last night. So even practically speaking, you say, listen, I gave online or whatever. Uh, she's going to be here for the second service today. We just wrote online on ours, and we're going to pray together in the second service. And we're just going to put it up there as, a, as an offering to the Lord. And so for the next few moments, we'll do that. And then after we uh, sing and respond for a moment, I'm going to come back and read that passage from King David uh, and celebrate the chance we have to give to the Lord today. So Lord, today we bring you, Lord, what you've really just given us. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege it is to be a part of building your house, to be a part of building your kingdom. Lord, I pray as your people give today that you would bless them greatly. Lord, I pray as your people give today that I pray your Holy Spirit would do surgery on our hearts, God, to cut us deep and break us for your kingdom, for your kingdom work. Lord, we thank you for calling us out of darkness into light. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to help us and use us to do that for others today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm gonna make it through I'm standing, I'm standing strong on you I'm gonna make it through Cause my house is built on you